He doesn't <laughs> have any trousers <laughs> He's on. Your boxes. Come on then, welcome them to our channel. Welcome back to the channel. Say it. Jay, have you been working from home for so long? You just. <laughs> welcome back to the Get channel. Get some zest. Hi guys and welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are here to bring you into the present moment with our ongoing fertility series. So at the minute we're like episode one and episode two. This is probably gonna be the closure episode of our yeah. journey so far. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, of our journey so far until we go back into treatment and everything. We wanted to kind of bring you up until the present moment today with where we're at, where we've been, and where we're going. So, yeah. I'm gonna take it over to you, Johnny. Okay, so, at the end of the first IUI, there was then a period that we have to, how long do you have to wait until the next IUI? Well, it's just, it's with your cycle. With your so cycle. your next period, that's when it all starts. Yeah, so Because from... you actually have your first scan when you're on your period. Yes. And Remember. then from your period, how long is it until you can have the next IUI? Is it two weeks? Well, you have your period for a week and then it's about two weeks after that. So like three weeks. Yes. So after the end of the first IUI, there was a short gap, wasn't there, where mm. we could potentially, and we haven't been out of the country for... 18 months. The last 18 months. And then we knew we were going to try it. We had um, family visiting and lots of different things going on after that. So we yep. thought, okay, this time, Shall we get away for a weekend? Like, where can we go? Where's on our green list in Spain? Yeah. So Ibiza, obviously only being part of Spain and the island only an hour away, we booked a last minute trip to Ibiza. Mm, which would fit into our dates that basically would allow us to still go straight into the next cycle and do yes. the IUI again. Yeah, so we booked Ibiza. Hello guys! So we are off to Ibiza in the next few minutes. So we booked this kind of last minute. It's for five nights. Uh, we're staying at Seven Pines Hotel, which was recommended to us. So we were looking for somewhere where it sort of had restaurants... Well, to be fair, we've been to Ibiza a couple of times, but we don't actually know anything about Ibiza. I went about 10 years ago with the lads and was just drunk the whole time. And then we went again with Taylor's family and we stayed in a villa. It was quite far away, so I can't really remember much about Ibiza. So this time we're gonna hire a car and then we are gonna go exploring, see the different beaches. Do what we wouldn't normally do, really. Do what we wouldn't normally do. We're not gonna be massively drinking or anything like that. Okay, so we're gonna show you what the airport's like, what it's like to travel. We have had to have a PCR test each, which was, which was yesterday, which was negative. We have to have that like two days before you travel. And yeah. How much, how much was it? 125 euros each. Expensive, isn't it? So we'll show you around the room. We've got a really nice room. I mean, it isn't the cheapest place at all, but it's called like a Laguna Suite. Yeah, we wanted to treat ourselves. It's been 18 months. So we thought, let's go all out on this trip and really enjoy somewhere nice. I mean, most people haven't actually traveled for 18 months, so. We're in the same boat as everybody really, but we thought whilst we can, whilst the light is green for us to go, you never know when it's going to change again, let's just get out of here. Hi guys. So, made it through the airport, took us about an hour, just going to get a Radler, get some food down here, taste it kind of hot. It weren't too bad was it? I'm just so, food. yeah, I'm absolutely starving. I've not even had anything today. The last meal I had was about like 4 p.m. yesterday. I've just not I've been so busy getting ready for the holiday that I've just not eaten and I'm so hungry. I'm going to go into duty free. I'll have a look at some sunglasses and I also need some eye makeup remover. Thank you. I'm going to try to get over that for me. at Ibiza Airport and we're just collecting our rental car for the week. We have just arrived at Ibiza Airport and that was pretty straightforward getting the rental car. Yes. 
It was the cheapest, but never is when to Nicaragua. What did we get? Volkswagen Polo? Yeah, I think it's probably cost us probably nearly 400 euro yeah. for five days. But do you know what, we'd probably spend it in Nevis because we do want to do quite a lot of yeah. travelling around. So now we're just going to go grab a quick coffee. I'm just going to edit forward. I'm not going to lie, it feels very surreal to be in a different place. And I can't believe how much airports and stuff have changed. Like, there's not a lot open in them. And then there's different processes. There was no passport control because obviously we came from Spain, which I didn't expect. Oh, look, it's in a while. Yeah, it feels so surreal to be coming on holiday. <laughs> yeah, you've left the door open. Yeah, I've left the luggage as well. <laughs> Flight was so quick from Malaga to Ibiza, about an hour and 15 minutes, something like that. Got here on time, flew with Ryanair and from our house to Malaga Airport it's only about 45 minutes so it feels like a really short journey that's why I think it feels so surreal that we're even here not yet I had a coffee you know, I'm lagging I've also got a little bit of a headache but very very excited to be here so next stop we will show you our hotel we're staying at the Seven Pines so see you in a sec where you're going to have breakfast tomorrow morning yeah. and everything as you can see here in the map hello hello quite big yeah, so we're just being taken to our room and so far it's beautiful it's so nice yeah the iced tea on arrival hit the spot baby you i think you just summed it up it's like um like a honeymoon vibe and some i just um did a little like location tag on my instagram story and someone said i knew you'd stay at seven pines because it's the healthiest resort in ivy <laughs> And we didn't even know that, but that's literally made me so happy. That means there's lots of healthy stuff to do, stuff to eat, I guess. So we're gonna follow the buggy now. So we're following this to our room. Here we are. Jack's already had a cocktail, I fire. Okay guys, so we have just been out for some lunch. Very nice, we have the chicken Caesar salad. Yep. There's actually really three good. restaurants here. So we just went to the one that's near the pool. Uh, really nice. Uh, we should have vlogged it to be fair because the views are insane. Like overlooking the whole. It does feel like you're on like a little tiny island, doesn't it? It's just mm. complete sea everywhere. It's very serene. Very relaxing vibes here. It's like a retreat. We've got loads of different activities going on. We're going to do the, like them every day at 9 o'clock. Pilates. Meditation. Meditation. Yoga the whole lot but yeah if you come in like to seven pines and wanted to do like a healthy kind of ibiza then yeah just, just to bear in mind like the gyms and stuff it's not just like walking you do have to like pre-book everything i'm a bit knackered to be fair i have mean, i've just had a bit so so tired oh we're actually going to gym in a minute we're actually gonna, it's seven o'clock we're gonna go to gym at eight and i might also go to the shop as well have a drive and get some snacks so let me just show you this is what we're looking at. It doesn't Just look much TV on. on camera, but it is the thing. It's really nice. It's small. Quaint. Quaint. I think I can do it personally if no one's tired. Get another coffee, a little coffee, come back, get showered, and like get dressed and actually go straight out into our beef tonight. Yeah. Because we've not had a day here, I feel like we should make it a night. Yeah, we don't really have a clue again like where we are no i think we're near san antonio i'll just quickly show you the pool so this is um, a pool that can be used by anyone so this can be like family pool kids pool okay so on the way to the gym this is the pool Yeah, look, the gym's in there. So we're going for a meal tonight. I think we're gonna stay local. Oh yeah.
Okay. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Not a lot of gymming going out here. Like a bar. So downstairs is, is the fitness area you need to book. And upstairs is the gym. Oh, okay. A few more weights on the bench, sorted. Guys, we've just been to the gym, as you've seen, and we've been debating over the last hour, like, shall we get ready? We are in IB for, let's go out. Um, but, do you know what, we've ordered room service, and we're staying in. Are we old? Are we sad? Possibly. What you got, Tay? Some kind of, like, fennel chicken, it's really nice. So yeah, just room service tonight. I think recharge the batteries, and then I'm thinking a drinking day tomorrow. I feel like getting on the sauce. Look how nice this is now, now it's dark. Right, we're off to breakfast. Been up since seven, washed and dried my hair. I think we're gonna um, go explore today. I wanna get out and about yeah, and see what it's all about. Today. So Because the thing is, yeah, we're staying in a lovely resort, but we, uh, we want to get out and just see our beef. Because otherwise we, we might as well be in Marbella if we just sit by the pool. Even though it's obviously much more gorgeous than our apartment complex. This what goes down. Guys, so it took about 45 minutes to get from our hotel over to the Marina Ibiza. Excited to see what this is all about. Today's going to do some shopping. Weather is beautiful. We've had some amazing breakfast. She's found one. Right guys, we're on the way to Cafe Mambo's. I've no idea if I'm dressed correctly for the occasion. So I'm wearing quite smart, smart casual. Casual t-shirt. This, trousers and then some trainers. So we'll see how we get on. We're not gonna take the camera with us because we don't wanna uh, be filming whilst we're having a good time. But we might get some footage on our camera, on our phones. You see it's, it's become a little bit of a mess. We're also in a little bit of a rush now. Taxi's on his way. Taylor snapped her nail off. She changed her outfit twice. Yeah, she had a really nice two piece American vintage, but it was silk and what was happening was, it was getting creased. As soon as she sat down, she stood up, it looked completely creased. So I spent, Taylor doesn't iron, I spent half an hour ironing it on this and then she sat down, stood up, it was creased. Right, anyway, let's go.
Now, this was the same period that the football um, was going on. <laughs> Obviously, England did very well. Honestly, girls, the football ruins everything. Guys, Taylor's just called up reception because the channel that we've got the TV in is in Spanish and they said that they're playing the game in a meeting room. Probably have all of the English people gathered in one spot. Are you up for that? <laughs> so let's go out and enjoy it with them. Buzzing. And I had been going out to the local pubs with a few friends to watch Shop. the football, obviously. Um, and then, just before, around about when we were going to Ibiza, we had a super chilled time, we were just relaxing and we had a couple of drinks and just we didn't do too much, but I had such no, a No, we should just do anything. We, we didn't really do much. <laughs> but there is a reason behind that. So, we had a test before we went, which was negative. We had a test um, to fly back to Spain, which was negative. So we had two tests within four days, both negative, but we had absolutely zero energy. So we didn't have any symptoms or anything, but we just, we were like, oh, shall we go to... And we just thought we were a little bit depressed. Yeah, we couldn't really put a finger on it. We just thought <laughs> we felt... Like, shall we do this? And you were like... It was the first time we'd gone to, a, you know, a new country, a new place. Like, Marbella is quite small. It was the first time we'd gone to somewhere. What we were excited to do is, like, you know, go to different shops and go to different restaurants and yeah. just see different things. Old Town and the port and, and, and whatever was there. And when we were there, it was honestly like there was, like, weights attached to our <laughs> arms and legs and we couldn't move. Like, I can't even explain the feeling, but I'd get in the car and I'm, like, quite... um. Like I'm not like a, a napper or anything. Like I don't go and have like a afternoon nap. You know, when I'm up, when I'm up, I'm up. You're up. <laughs> and I'd get in the car. Jack would be like, right, oh, should we force ourselves to go over to <laughs> IB the old town and have a look around? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'd get in the car and I'd be like literally drifting off, and I'd be like, I'm so tired. It's actually one occasion where we drove all the way there and then we were in the car park, we'd parked the car and I was like, I'm sorry, I can't get out no, of the car. No, what had happened is we went, it, we were where we were from, I don't know, the east side, where we wanted to go was like, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes. We drove 50 minutes, we parked, we got out, we walked and it was so hot. And we that like, was oh. the first time. Yeah, that but, was the first attempt. And we were like, oh, this is, this is so, you know, it must it's be the heat, hot. it must be the yeah, heat. Making us back. lethargic. So we got back and either that night, was it the same night? I think we went over again or the next no, night. No, it was the it was the next day. Did the two well an hour trip there again, and it was cool because it was night. I, can't, I have no energy. It was because it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come in the day. Then didn't we go in the day on the last day? We're like we've got to get out. And then we can get. Out. I was in the car park and I just said to you, I'm really sorry. We've come all this way, but I can't get out of the car. We were only like sort of chilling anyway, and we didn't feel too great. So no. we got back. Now I was, I was actually going back IB for the weekend after because it was a friend's thirtieth birthday. And I was really excited last for holiday. that because. I've not seen my friends for like a year or so, so I was like, oh, amazing. And then I, ha I had to take a test before going to that trip. And anyway, the test came back and I was positive. We were actually in bed. Jack had packed, he'd booked his flights, he'd waited till last minute to, you know, to rule out that he could be positive. Yeah. Like, it was half 11, no, like nearly midnight, we were in bed and then the phone rang and we were like, that's really weird, like someone's calling us at this time. Well, I'd actually... Um, been logging on online and it, I actually had a negative test so I then booked um, I extended the flight so we were in the final I booked all my cases my seats and everything and then yeah about well I think it was about half 12 a Spanish number was calling me which you wouldn't normally answer but no, you were so, like you know what if it's an emergency yeah I kept on rejecting so obviously I was getting up at, in five hours to go on holiday and then eventually the guy called and said you we got your results wrong they were they're actually positive and, and I was like, was... yeah, right, I thought it was one of the lads, so I was like, yeah, no chance. And I hung up, and he rang back, he said, no, no, positive. I was like, there's no way that someone would ring me at, like, half twelve at night, off a weird like, hard number who, who, or, or a Spanish number. What kind number. of doctors call it? And I said, oh. I've got my certificate, and I've actually sent it off to Ryanair, so, you know, I'm all good. And then he said, no, you are positive, can you go on your computer and... I said, okay, obviously, because I wanted to check. So I went on the computer and checked and it changed it to positive. So that was a nightmare. But it made a lot more sense then, because I'd started to feel even more drained at this point, and I had literally no energy. 
Mm. I was I was actually okay at this point. Yeah, you were okay. I was like I've, I've like had no energy all week, but no real other symptoms. Um, and then literally, obviously, we had coronavirus, and then we we proceeded to sort of get all the symptoms, and mm-hmm. and we were sort of bed bound for ten days or so. The next IUI was in um, July. So because the coronavirus, they didn't want to do it so close to... Have it in your system. Yeah, and they said, okay, no, let's let's leave it for the next cycle. Which was gutting. Which was horrific. I was thinking at this point, that has <laughs> gone to a football game, gave us coronavirus, and now can't have IUI. <laughs> yeah, so... It was uh, really, was really disappointing, good. and we even, like phoned them and said, look, is there anything we can do? Like, you know, we're, at this point we were like, you know, the, we, we started to test negative. We were doing antigen tests and we kept getting negatives and we were like, look, we're negative now. You know, is there any way that we could, you know, just still do this? You know, we're, we're desperate. And they were like, they don't, we just don't recommend it. Like, no, basically. So that was that. <laughs> like that whole thing was yeah. just seemed very unlucky, didn't it? Because um, after the first one, and obviously it didn't work, our emotions at that point was like, oh, let's go and do it as fast as we can. I know you were like, oh, I'm in an hour at the time, but then straight away, like the next day after the failed test, you're like, okay, let's go and do it straight away. So yeah. it isn't that long period, like you say, like a month in between each goes or yeah. four and you to can, six weeks. This is a common question, like, can you go straight back in with it? And you can, you can do it as many times as you want. So that was that, so that was July. And then... So then we were like, okay, right, August what's in the calendar how can we do this the way that the dates work out with my cycle and everything we've now basically ah, yes. found out that it, we actually wouldn't be here in time to start the process because we'd already booked a trip our first trip back to the uk in probably nearly two years now yeah we've booked that and that's going to clash with the time that i would need to physically be in marbella to start or to be in the process of the treatment yeah so the period after we recovered from coronavirus we were like okay the next the next um iui start the procedure will be sort of middle of august and we were mm. like okay well we've got a we were returning back to the uk on 4th of september so the lady at hc was like okay well if if taylor has an early period let's say sort of like i don't know 10th of august then you're going to have an opportunity to do it within yeah. august however if taylor has a you know, a normal or a late period, then it's going to run too close to when you go home on the 4th of September. So they wouldn't want Very to... Very late. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't want to start the procedure, like, you know, the, the tablets and everything, knowing that you, you're going to you're gonna miss the end date. Yeah. So there was, like, a, a gap for potential of doing August, even though we're going back to the UK, but the period came in late. So yeah. we so, just have missed it. But in between the period of when we had coronavirus and we knew that we were going to wait until middle of August, we kind of changed our attitude a little bit and sort of switched off because a lot of people have always said to us, listen, don't focus on it, relax, de-stress. And can I say, yeah. that is the worst thing that you can ever hear. I speak to so many women, obviously now, people know where I'm at with fertility and trying to have a baby and stuff. And honestly, the worst thing you can say to people, even though it's you know probably the, the right thing to do, yeah. is to say, you just need to relax, like try not to think about it. But that is an impossible situation when you are in a controlled process where everything has to be done and mapped out for you and you're having help. You can't just, oh, let's have sex and see what happens. We've tried that, hun. No. It don't work. So. We did um, decide to sort of take our minds off it by going out a little bit. We had a few, we're like, it's the middle of obviously the summer here and it's, yeah. it, it's like become really busy. Yeah, and I've had um, it, I've had a year really out of going out at all, drinking at all. Yeah. Um, for numerous different reasons, mainly my health journey that I've been on since the end of November last year. Um, yeah. So we haven't really been drinking or anything. And then obviously with wanting to have a baby, we've wanted to give it every chance possible. You know, I've got healthier, I've lost two stone, uh, which is always gonna help. You know, I was, yeah. was overweight. We've done all of the things that we needed to do to really give it the best chance. And then we kind of came to this decision where we're like, do you know what, we're actually gonna do not the opposite. <laughs> we're, no, gonna, we're just going to have a few, like two, three weeks of enjoying just stop ourselves. stop being so overly responsible yeah. now and controlled in every area. And we're going to yeah. live a little. I think we, we both, especially me, had a bit of an epiphany. 
after yeah. we had COVID because I am somebody who stays at home a lot. I'm much yeah. better now, which you will know from like the past couple of months from my Instagram. Yeah. But pre-COVID, I stayed in the house a lot, very homebody. You know, I could stay in the house for like a week sometimes <laughs> and not even know that I've not yeah, left until yeah. I'm starting to feel really like, why do I feel so weird and depressed and I'm like oh I've not left the house in a week that's it so um to get out and yeah it's it one was... thing that, you know you choose him to stay but knowing that you actually can't physically leave the house yeah. I think it just kind of gave me this like awakening where I was like I actually need to get out yeah, the house and, more. and the summers it's coming to the end of the summer and and like everyone's like well what you've been doing and we're like well I we haven't really been being watching that been... yeah so like, <laughs> Let's get out, let's enjoy a few weeks. We've, we've got to wait now until the next IUI. Let's just, you know, have a few evenings out. Oh no, you stop coming out. Ready for the big night out, hun? I'm absolutely busted today, you know. I'm out. I'm, I'm getting older, but I'm still out. <laughs> I've not done this for a long time. But I feel Look, like you I don't, don't need to justify it to me, okay? <laughs> Guys, we made it till 10 to 3 and we went to a nightclub. Jack, how are you feeling about it all? Honestly, I can't stop messaging people. Do you know when you had too much to Wait, what the oh fuck? Oh, I love my friends. <laughs> you, know, like, you know what, I'm in Spain, but I just love friends back in England. Um, tell everyone how much you... Know, how much fun you're having. How much fun you're having. <laughs> you know, your friends and family, that you miss them, and you know... Oh no, you're not yeah. doing that, are you? No, no, I'm not. I am, I am, I am doing that. Go on, you can't stop messaging people. So, you know, what, are you, you, what are you no, saying to what them? I'm saying is, Chat in pure work. No, no, less, listen. Do you know when you've had a lot you to drink? You need to put your mask over your nose, mate. Do you know when you've had a lot to drink? All yeah. you want to do is just. <laughs> Guys, honestly. That mask, that, mask, that mask is doing as much use as fuck all. I just wish you all. <laughs> Shout out to the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Me, honestly, were this. I just fucking this. love my friends and family. <laughs> we were this. Hey, guys, if you're following me, I just miss you so much. <laughs> Put your mask on your nose now. So, Mr. Me, you really need to go home. And it's so no, I, I ain't afraid of telling me mates that I love them. <laughs> so, that's been absolutely amazing. So, tomorrow we've got a call with. Um, HC clinic and we're going to see how we can plan because we are also going back to the UK in October. Mm -hmm. We've got two trips. Got two trips, so two nine, ten day trips, one in September, one in October. We obviously we've missed the August one. We're in the UK until the 13th of September. I'm really hoping now that they're going to say to us tomorrow or period or whatever needs to happen falls that so when we get back in September mm -hmm. we can sort of go straight into the next the next IUI process. We could potentially make it. We could potentially and however if we miss the September one and then we're away in October. It's going to have to be November. Then it could actually be November which oh my god. That seems really That's a long time away. I said to Jack what feels upsetting for me really is that last Christmas which I don't know about anybody else but it feels like a few months ago like I haven't this year has just gone so fast do you think mm. I still it feels like not long ago that we had the tree up the Christmas tree <laughs> and you know I envisioned last Christmas the Christmas that's just been like oh I'm definitely going to be pregnant this year there's no way like and I remember really wishing around Christmas that I was pregnant and obviously we've been trying and everything and now we're like venturing into being yeah think, you know I don't want to be negative but we're venturing very close to Christmas again where it could be like oh another Christmas has gone by and I'm yeah. still not pregnant you know we're still not on that journey to because become parents. we're also um, going to go back to the UK in December for Christmas to see yeah. our, we want to our, do the whole of, of our family we want to do the whole of December or make like four to six weeks 
this is obviously our priority, but mm-hmm. it's also got to fit around, you know, actual real life. You know, yeah. going back to the UK, seeing friends, family. Obviously, we we're in Spain and now in the UK. Yeah, and also you never know when things could change again. We really do have to go back to the UK now because yeah. we haven't taken the chances before when there has been chances for us to go back. Like, I need to see my granddad. I need to see my nan. You need to see your nan. Yeah. So that's where we're up to. Um, I think this fertility series. Um, We'll come to a little pause, not an end, um, until we actually resume the process. I think now we've gone through that once. You obviously before you you've ever experienced anything like that. You don't know what it's like, how to cope, the emotions. And we did really just think this is going to work. Yeah, I was obviously uh, a little bit deluded with the certainty up <laughs> as it was today. Um, so now I think the you second posi- time you've done you it, you positively delusional. Yes. But now you've done it, you've experienced it, it's like anything. I think we should be, we will be better prepared this next time round. Mm. Um, and obviously not about the results. I don't know how we, you know, how that's going to uh, you know, be. But the, 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 t- the process and the two weeks up until the results day, I think like we can handle them. I can, but obviously I, you're the one that's on all the different medication and stuff mm. so it's easy for me to say because you have something that's actually affecting your body and your mm. your brain so okay so we've just gone to watch that back and the video is actually cut off so i'm just going to end this video now firstly i just want to thank everyone from myself and taylor for all of the amazing and just wonderful messages obviously we've we've seen the messages for the first two fertility videos and it literally it's just the nicest thing ever to read you know some people have, are going through something similar people are going through IVF people are looking to go through these kind of processes themselves I've had people message me about the hair tablets that they didn't realize that that's affected them and they're going to look into that so yeah honestly the messages can't thank you enough it really really it's just so warming to receive them, so thank you. So we're going to show you the clip of hopefully when we can find out for the next IUI and then we will continue filming when we get close to that period. So thank you very much, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Do you like it? Yes, I do. I, oh. I think it's like it's very help, helpful. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, so we um, just wanted to catch up with you on when's best to do okay. the IUI. What what I need is when Taylor gets her period, she texts me, and then I give you the the appointment to start the treatment. But, right away okay perfect so basically just what we did but starting uh well after october 23rd my next period after that okay so <laughs> you guys uh, have fun yeah enjoy it and <laughs> then you let me know when you get yeah. your period on in october okay? yeah should i still uh, be taking those 30 biotic tablets yes just because obviously the last time there wasn't much volume, <laughs> so this time I want to make sure we are ready. Uh, usually advise us to keep taking it, like the longer the better. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.